All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm back again today to do another Future State, DC Future State comic book review. Uh, if you saw my first one I did on The Next Batman, number one, uh, my uh, overall opinion of this new initiative with DC for the first two months of 2021, this Future State thing, it's overall been pretty positive so far. Uh, we're already into our second week of it, and we actually have a number of comic books out. So far, I've read... Uh, the next Batman number one, of course. I've read Wonder Woman, Future State Wonder Woman, uh, Future State Superman of Metropolis, Future State Robin Eternal, and Future State Dark Detective. I have many more to go. I'm actually starting to get really behind on doing these videos, but I'm hoping to knock out quite a few of them tonight. And first of all is Future State Dark Detective. Now, this is probably my most anticipated uh, comic book coming out of uh, DC Future State. Second most was probably the next Batman because I knew it was eventually going to tie into this, so it was going to be relevant, but this is what I really want to know. Why do we even have a new Batman to begin with? Like, what happened to Bruce Wayne? And we find out in this issue, we can see here by the cover, it looks like things aren't going well for him. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So this takes place in a future Gotham, uh, it's got to be at least like 10 years into the future. It looks more than that, because as I said in my uh, next Batman number one review, it looks very cyberpunky and very advanced. But I think according to the timeline uh, that they put out in the uh, the free like comic book advertisement for Future State, I'm pretty sure it said that this these stories take place 10 years into the future. So take that for what you will. 10 years, I guess shit can advance really far. So, it opens up with this, like, view of the graveyard, this big graveyard in Gotham, next to all the skyscrapers and shit, and it's Bruce Wayne, he's looking through this chain link fence at the graveyard, he's talking about how, like, everyone thinks he's dead, uh, it, it's been a month now, everyone thinks he's dead, people think he got shot and killed, and then he starts to kind of have this flashback uh, of how he got shot and killed. And it shows him walking down an alley. I'm going to assume it's Crime Alley, where his parents got murdered. And it shows... It doesn't show him get shot, but it just kind of... The next page you'll see is... Uh, he's holding his gut, he's been shot, and he's running away. And Peacekeeper 01, this, these are the those Peacekeepers we learned about in Next Batman number 1. They are kind of like the, the, the lieutenants and... Generals, they're like the they're the higher echelon of the magistrate, the enforcers of the magistrate, and this is magistrate or this is uh, peacekeeper zero one. So I can only assume that he's like the head honcho peacekeeper. He's the baddest of the bad, and that makes sense that they would send him to kill Bruce Wayne. Uh, a lot of these panels that I've included in this presentation have the dialogue removed. So uh, normally this one right here, he would have a dialogue bubble, and what he says is, "We know who you are." So I'm assuming that the Magistrate, whoever they are, wherever they come from, they are aware that Bruce Wayne is actually Batman. Uh, or was, you know. So Bruce gets shot and he flees. Uh, it doesn't really show exactly why this guy wasn't able to, you know, tr you know, follow Bruce, run after him, finish the job. I mean, it is Bruce Wayne. It's freaking Batman. So it, I guess it's not a, a stretch of the imagination to assume he just managed to get away he's done it before uh and he finds like a back alley surgeon he calls him like gotham's best butcher so you know he is a back alley surgeon but i mean he's, uh, even bruce describes him as the best of them and he gives him what he says is the last of the wayne family fortune to fix him up so now we've learned that not only is bruce wayne uh dead he's been presumed dead for the past month prior to that he was also broke. So now we're wondering what happened to Wayne Enterprises and why was Bruce Wayne, why did he only have like a little bit of money to his name and he was forced to spend it on getting himself fixed up. So after we get this little bit of a flashback, we jump back to present day. Bruce comes into this like cyberpunk sci-fi diner cafe. He talks about how like, oh, he managed to scrounge up enough change to have a cup of coffee. And then he starts seeing on the holographic news, the cyberpunk news, Peacekeeper 01 is talking about how, like, they've killed the Batman. Uh, he doesn't say that the Batman was Bruce Wayne, so that's another thing that's interesting, because in the alley when he shot him, 
he clearly said, I know it didn't show it in the picture on here, but I have the comic book actually right in front of me in my hands, and I can tell you for a fact that it says, um, let's see here, it says, we know who you are. But then later on on this news broadcast, he doesn't reveal Bruce's identity. So either when he said, we know who you are, he wasn't talking about Bruce being a Batman, or for some other reason unknown to us yet, they've chosen not to reveal Bruce's true identity. Uh, so, let's see here. Hmm. It doesn't really tell you when Batman, when they killed Batman. Like, he's saying here on the news, he's talking about how they've killed Batman, but it doesn't say when. It makes it very clear that Bruce Wayne was, quote-unquote, murdered, shot, and killed a month ago. This is a month after that happened. People have thought he was dead for a month. It, they don't make a clear distinction as to how long how long the Batman has been dead. And like I said, they, they don't really seem to make the connection, at least publicly, that Bruce Wayne was Batman. So anyway, Bruce has his cup of coffee in this cafe, and then he decides to head on out. And uh, I'm sorry for the quality of these pictures, but this is the best this, this is the best I could find. So he heads back out, and he's just kind of walking down the alley, and he finds some punks messing with this older guy. And, of course, him being Bruce Wayne, Batman, uh, he gets involved. And the guy tries to stab him, and Bruce starts kicking their ass. And next thing you know, uh, this guy gets a lucky punch in, punches Bruce in the face. Next thing you know, they hear this loud something shouting, stop all movement. It's a magistrate drone. Drones start chasing him and following him down, shooting after them. This whole time, Bruce has been contemplating, like, I'm dead. The world thinks I'm dead. I'm broke. You know, even if I wasn't dead, I was broke before I got shot and people thought I was dead. So, like, what do I do right now? You know, what should I even do? And he starts to think, like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to fight, you know? Um, and he, he says something really interesting when he starts talking about, like, he comes to the conclusion that, like, he's not down and out. He's not just going to, you know, qu call it quits. Uh, he says something that it was Wayne Enterprise, it was his company, his technology, and Batman overall, his brand of justice, that created the Magistrate. And he talks about how because of that, he knows how to take them apart and bring them down. So, he runs away from the drones, and he pulls out this little Batman mask. I don't know if it's some kind of like sci-fi collapsible cowl, or if that's really all it is, it's just that little piece right there. But he pulls that out tears away his jacket and shirt and underneath everything he's got on the utility belt he's got on a piece of like a, like a chest plate piece of like high-tech body armor that he spray painted or painted a yellow bat logo on he's wearing some like tactical combat pants and tactical combat boots it, it underneath the uh the body armor plate vest he's just wearing like a black t-shirt and then the, the mask is just this little, like, collapsible cowl thing he pulled out and just put on his head. And he runs away from the drones. He uses the, a grappling hook he has to grab onto a building. One of the drones actually manages to shoot him fruit through, like, kind of near the ankle, but, like, still in, like, the calf muscle of his leg. Uh, so between uh, him getting actually getting punched in this fight, him actually getting shot, Peacekeeper Zero One one actually able to get the drop on him and shooting him, and then, I don't have it included here in this presentation, but after he fires this grapple gun and tries to start go swinging through, you know, the skyscrapers in Gotham, he actually just crashes into something and just falls on his ass down into, like, through a roof of a building. So, we are really looking at a Batman here that is down on his luck. And he's not, I guess he's called the Dark Detective, I don't know. He talks about how, like, he's not really Batman anymore, but he's the ghost of Batman. So, I guess he's just the Dark Detective. But anyway, uh, this is a real down and out Batman. Like he is, he is not his true self. He was broke before he got shot. Uh, the Peacekeeper Zero One. Either this dude is the baddest dude that's ever been, because he was able to get the drop on Batman and shoot him, or Bruce has lost his edge. And I'm gonna, le I'm leaning towards you know Bruce has lost his edge, because we also see here this dude actually manages to punch him. These drones actually managed to shoot him. He, I don't have, like I said, I don't have it included here in this presentation, but he kind of, like, looks like he's out of practice with the grappling gun because he hooks it to a building, but he ends up just crashing right into, like, a billboard or something. And so, yeah. But even throughout all that, 
uh, the story ends with Bruce is back. He's back in the cowl. Uh, he's not Batman per se because, like, remember we have a new Batman. Luke Fox is the new Luke Fox is the new Batman. But Bruce is back in the cowl. He is a version of Batman. He's the dark detective, and he said he says, "Fuck this! I'm gonna bring the magistrate down, or I'm die, or I'm gonna die trying." This is all such a breath of fresh air. Uh, I'm loving it. And I'm really, really starting to kind of uh, regret the fact that this is only a two-month-long event, this future state thing. Uh, things, if I, things that I don't like about it, there's not much. The only thing I would say is there are a lot of, uh, I would say, C and D-list characters, lesser-known, less popular characters that... DC is trying to, I guess they're trying to increase their level of popularity, so they're shoehorning stories about them into these stories. So, uh, Detective or Dark Detective number one, when you're holding the actual physical copy of the comic book in your hands, only half of it is about Bruce Wayne. The second half of it is a completely different story called No Future Past, and it's about Grifter. For all you don't know who the character Grifter is, uh, just do a quick Google search. But it's not, it has the second half of, the second physical half of this comic book uh, is not about Bruce Wayne, Dark Detective, Future State at all. It's about Grifter. And I will say this, during that part of the story, uh, the, the Grifter part, he does end up meeting up with Luke Fox, who... As far as we know, we've been led to believe Luke Fox is this new Batman. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, I'm hoping it, it builds into something, you know, relevant. And this isn't just a way for them to be like, Oh, you thought you were buying a Bruce Wayne Batman comic, but we snuck a Grifter story in there. And now you have to read Grifter and you're going to learn to like Grifter. And then you're going to want to read all of Grifter's shit. Because that's not going to work. Um... I do kind of feel a little cheated because I paid for a grifter story, even though like, I, I thought I was paying for a DC Future State Bruce Wayne Dark Detective Batman story. That's what I thought I was paying for, and I paid six bucks for it. What I did, what I really didn't know was I was actually only paying three bucks for a Bruce Wayne dark detective batman future state story and i was paying an additional three bucks for a grifter story that i had no desire for whatsoever i couldn't give i could not give less of a shit about grifter and this grifter story i'm not saying it wasn't it wasn't entertaining it wasn't good i'm not saying it wasn't well written what i'm saying for is i don't care i didn't ask for it and it's not what i was trying to buy and pay for you know i'd be more than happy to spend six bucks on a you know dark detective uh, Bruce Wayne Batman story that was this big as, uh, that was as thick as this comic book but half of this comic book's pages are about Grifter and not about Bruce Wayne so that's kind of some sketchy underhanded bullshit that you're kind of doing DC um, if you want to tell a Grifter story just write a separate Grifter comic and here's the deal uh, if no one buys it and it, it, it performs poorly in sales then just take that for what it is that's, that's the mass public telling you fuck Grifter and then just accept that. Just accept fuck Grifter and throw him away and stop doing shit with him. You know, they it wasn't just uh, in that storyline that they've done this. As I've said before, I've also already read... Which other ones were they? I have the whole pile right here. Uh, the next Batman, the second half of the story was about the Outsiders and the Arkham Knights. So this part I'm still kind of interested in because it, it definitely seems like a, it, it's relevant. It's relevant in that, yes, we have to show the next Batman, and yes, we have to show uh, what what's up, what's going on with Bruce and the other members of the Bat family. But like, we also need to just show kind of like, in the meantime, while this new Batman is figuring out what he's doing, and the old Batman is getting his shit back together, who's holding down the fort? What's happening in Gotham? And I'll tell you right now, it wasn't Grifter. This Grifter story was about he was he was playing cards and then some cops came to get him because the magistrate is rounding up everybody who was a vigilante and wore a mask and then he fights them and then he gets put into an armored truck with luke fox and then they break out and escape and then luke fox asks grifter like hey can you i need you to get me out of gotham and grifter agrees now i'm not saying that there's no possible way 
that this grifter story could go anywhere relevant. It 100% could. It could end up being super relevant and it's super important and super awesome. But what I'm saying is stop this sneaky shit where like you, 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 you go, Hey, here's a Bruce Wayne, dark detective, Batman comic. It's six bucks. And you're getting all this, all this, all these pages of Bruce Wayne, dark detective, Batman. Cause that's not what it was. Half of it was grifter. And that's not what I want. I don't care about grifter. Uh, what else did they do it in? Um, the Superman and Metropolis story. Half of this shit was about Guardian and Mr. Miracle. I could, I, I could not give a fuck. Especially about Guardian. Like, I, I'm sorry, but I just do not give a flying fuck about Guardian. I don't give a shit. Uh, the Jonathan Kent Superman story, I'm going to do a whole review and video on that. That was actually pretty good. But once again, it was the same deal. It was like, that was only half the... the in terms of the page quantity of this book, only half the pages were about suit Jonathan Kent Superman. The rest was like Guardian and Mr. Miracle bullshit. Uh, and then, of course, Wonder Woman. Uh, her comic is a, like a little bit thinner than the Dark Detective or the Superman one. But it's all Wonder Woman. And it was only $4. As opposed to the Superman and the Dark Detective and whatnot, which was 6 So... Uh, DC, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to sneak, uh, lesser performing characters into these comic books. You, you're like, oh, we know people are going to buy the next Batman. We know people are going to buy Superman. We know people are going to buy Dark Detective. So let's sneak these characters no one gives a fuck about into those books. And that way, people will, like, they'll inevitably have to read them. And then they'll get to know them more. And then they'll like them. Well, I'm going to continue to dislike them simply on the principle that you dishonestly tricked me into paying for a story about a character I didn't want to know a story about. Like, I had no desire to read a grifter story, but you tricked me into buying one. So, no thank you. But other than that, I'm loving this future state thing. I'm especially loving the Gotham portion of it where it's been overrun by the Magistrate. We still don't know how that happened. We still don't know what happened to Wayne Enterprises and why Bruce was broke. We still don't know why he's off his game and he kind of sucks at fighting and, you know, uh, using the grappling hook and just overall being Batman. We don't know what happened to a lot of the Bat family. We don't know how Luke Fox ended up being this new Batman. We don't know a lot, and I want to know more. I really, really want to know more. So, yeah, overall positive. Just stop sneaking stories about shit characters no one wants to hear about into the popular character books. Other than that, though, Future State is awesome. Let me know what you guys think. Anybody else who's read this, any feedback you guys want to give, anything you noticed that I didn't notice, please leave some comments below. Check out some of my other videos. Hit the like button, subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.